Mike Pereira of Fox Sports, longtime top zebra on all of the National Football League here in the Rich Eisen Show studio. Good to see you, sir. Nice to be here again. Yeah, in person. We got a lot to get to. There's a lot going let's on. Go. Let's, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's not delay. Uh, uh, Jimmy on. Graham, this is a big moment in the Saints and the Falcons contest where he catches it, appears to break the plane. It is ruled a fumble that he had not broken the plane, that his forward progress was stopped. After further review, the play stood as called, even though you have come on before and said, Dean Blandino, you're one of your successors, uh, or I guess your successor twice removed or once removed in the NFL, that unless he doesn't get a line, a shot directly down the line, he thinks he's going to stand as called. And this sure looks as if there's a camera oh. directly down the goal line and that he is, he is fighting forward. The ball crosses the plane. Do you agree with this standing as called, Mike Pereira? Uh, no, I don't, but I understand it. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I think that this would have been reversed into a touchdown last year if just the referee and the replay official were looking at it. Because but why are things the, different now that New York is involved? Well, I, I think they've gone back to the original philosophy that you and I have talked about before. You know, we sat in the Fox studios yesterday. Most of us thought that it was a touchdown. Most of us is not enough anymore. Dean Blandino wants all of us to think that. And so he has taken the philosophy with input from the referees and saying, you know, we're not going to overturn anything unless it is absolutely crystal clear. And he didn't hear nothing. You know, they didn't rule a touchdown. They didn't rule forward progress. So he stayed with the call. And I, and I, I do think it would have been reversed last year, but it's totally consistent with what he's been saying all year hey, long. Hey, listen, quite frankly. we are looking. There's two things that we need. We need consistency. We also need accuracy. And to me, when I see that, that looks as if he is bringing the ball across the plane, and that is, and that would be something that I would revert. But is there some sort of standard that that the league is trying to set based on the fact that they are involved in the process from New York City that in previous years would have been just up to the officials on the field? Yeah, clearly to me. And all you have to do is look at the stats. I mean, if you look at the stats that are out now through Week 15, they haven't been calculated. Still have one more game to go here. You know, last year through week 15 and all of the challenges and reviews, 45.1% of those reviews and challenges were reversed. This year they're down to 36.8%. So a lot less are being overturned. And I, I think what Dean and the league and his staff is trying to do is not to officiate the play. They're going, they're going and looking at it and saying, okay, this is what was called on the field and we're going to stay with it unless it's 100% that we are 100% solidly, uh, you know, can prove well, that it's I, not. I have to say, it and looks, that's, it and looks, that's why he did it. It looks to me that it did happen on that play, but if you're asking me, am I 100% sure, I can't say that. Yeah, and, and, I, that's and what I, you're I, think, I think we can, there's so many plays every week. I mean, we went on the air twice yesterday and said, you know, I, I really think this is a touchdown. I think they ruled a, uh, a receiver had stepped out of bounds at the two and it didn't look like he had, but they didn't reverse it and make it a touchdown. I mean, I think it's consistent. So I think we have to, I think we have to go back to the original belief, which it should have been that replay is only going to correct the egregious error. That's what that's what it was put into doing. I think that's what Dean and his staff are getting to now. Mark Sanchez, late in the game of the uh, of the opening doubleheader on Saturday, threw an interception. Uh, Bashad Breland, as he is cradling the ball, it sure does look as if the ground helps him cradle it, and it moves slightly. We're sitting there, Irvin's sitting there, I'm sitting there, Mooch sitting there, Marshall sitting there, and we're thinking this is going to be overturned, and it stood as called. Where do you stand on this, Mike? I'm again right where I was before I talked to Dean about this play. Okay. You know, and, and here, here was Dean's comment to me, because I didn't see it. I was traveling down here. Yeah, he, no. said, he said, I think it was incomplete, but I can't prove it. He's got some control before it hits the ground. The ball moved. Did he lose possession? I can't tell if he does or not. So while, and again, and again, as part of that, it, it's, his, it's a comment that I've heard from him a lot. I think it's incomplete. I think it's a touchdown. But I can't 100% prove it, so I'm not going to go against the call. And I think you put this one with the Jimmy Graham thing. I think it's the same thing. Is this something from the competition committee then, Mike Pereira, that he is adjudicating this in this manner? As, whereas in previous years, it just had to be close enough, a preponderance of evidence, as opposed to it's a lock, solid case, no question about it. Because that, again, looks to me as if the ball is moving yeah, there on the ground. But he, and, and I would say to you, ball moving means nothing. Does he actually lose, but hands come off the ball. But 
Is it a competition committee thing? Yes. I mean, there's a reason why Dean Blandino and his staff are involved this year. Which is and a that's good thing. because they weren't happy with the decisions uh -huh. that were being made in replay last year and they wanted more consistency. And so how do you get more consistency? Well, I think you get more consistency. The easiest way is staying with the calls that are made on the field. Let's get to the last thing. Uh, one of our callers, our international uh, viewers, wanted me to ask about this, and it's a good thing because we were going to ask you about it anyway. The the Donny Brook that uh, that that uh, broke ah, out in in yeah. St. Louis yesterday. And uh, before we get to your thoughts on that, uh, our caller wanted to know why wasn't the guy who initially hit. Uh, Odell Beckham, Alec Ogletree out of bounds so late. Why wasn't he the one ejected as well? Do you just need to be uh, caught with fisticuffs to get the gate? Or if you're the one who uh, starts everything off with an illegal hit, shouldn't you get the gate too? Well, you know, I think if you just had nothing other than Alec Ogletree's hit out of bounds, it wouldn't be an ejection. I mean, it's a laid hit. It's a football act. And so that would not create an ejection. So though, no matter own. what ejectionable offenses have taken place due to fight from that, yeah. you, you can't yeah, be penalized you, after yeah, the Yeah, really. I mean, the ejections okay. really do come from punches, kicks, gotcha. stomps, like Dominic Rayola should have been ejected for his stomp that he had in his game. But, you know, to me, you know, I, I think to actually take a guy for a football act and take him off the pitch, you know, to me is, nice. uh, is not necessarily the right thing to do. And they did call him for the foul, mm -hmm. um, you know, but he wasn't one that was guilty of a punch. Or now, taunting, uh, uh, as Beckham was called for with his celebration in the end zone, I'll never forget the first owner's meeting. Well, the owner's meeting where where the uh, can't use the ball as a prop anymore was laid into the, and you came up to me and you told me that this is going to pass when I saw you. And I'm like, come on, man. I mean, this is a, a league where, where we need to see these celebrations. It's so much fun. Fans love them. And you were you said this is not just for me. This is from ownership. These are from letters that the league gets from high school coaches saying, "Please put an end to this stuff because we're seeing it too much on our field of play." Where do you stand now, years later, now that you're out of the league? Is this something that uh, your mindset has changed at all on? At no, all, no. I mean, I even feel stronger about it now. You know, I don't think that we have that Giants uh, Rams fight mm. without the. The Beckham spinning of the ball at the opponents, and then you get Trey Mason, who, you know, he now imitates uh, Victor Cruz in his dance and Beckham in his dance. And it's all, it's all to me taunting. And it leads to what they're going through now in the league, which is these pushing and shoving and altercations. And I'll tell you, the league doesn't like that. And they do get letters from high school coaches and Pop Warner coaches and saying that, you know, they're not allowed in lower levels because sportsmanship is an issue and they want to teach sportsmanship. But what about showing I don't think exuberance? What about showing I, no, exuberance, No, no, show Mike. exuberance are great. Celebration is great. Demonstrations, another thing. I think that's another thing. And, uh, you know, and give, throw me under the bus because I am one of the purists. I don't like sledging, um, as nice. we refer to. Sledging. Um, and I love David's call, but I don't like sledging. I don't think it has a a part in the game and you know to me it's not just Odell Beckman that catches the pass it's the quarterback that throws it it's the lineman that block it's the, the defense it's a team sport and I'm just I'm just one that thinks that this whole plan stuff goes a little bit too far. I'm old. Bah, I'm old-fashioned. I'm a tra traditionalist. I don't mind bah, him. If, don't spin the ball at somebody. I don't mind if you spin the ball. I, I, mean, I, I, I don't, don't mind, mind if you I dance. don't mind you celebrations. Dance. You just it's big. These uh, things, these things bah, very rarely happen. Bah, very rarely happen. My God, it seems like for some players, all -time yeah. Right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, some of these guys, when these offensive linemen get in the end zone, it's fantastic. Well, if that happens, I say let them do something. Oh, like, see, oh but if somebody's, on. somebody's that's a, that's on their 13th a, touchdown a, of the that's year. That's a special occasion, but you got guys catching a four-yard pass for a first down, and they got to get up and give the big signal. Come on. Mike let's, Pereira of Fox football. Sports is here on the Rich Eisen Show. As always, we appreciate you coming in. And then after you come in, we have a special segment with you for just our television-only viewers. As for our radio audience, stay right there. There is Cutler News out of Chicago. Cutler News on the back end. In part to you before we head out the door. One more to hit with you. You mentioned in the uh, previous segment, Dominic Rayola, he stomped. Uh, he stomped on uh, um, Ego Ferguson. Mm -hmm. And it sure looks intentional. He says he didn't. It wasn't intentional. 
but the Bears certainly took offense to it. You would have ejected him if you were on the field? Oh, absolutely. If I'd have seen that, I would have ejected him. Remember, and Dominican Sue said it was unintentional when he stomped on his opponent's arm. And it does sure look, look like he's looking down as he oh, does it. Oh, it's no question he's all, it's he, intentional. He's the same guy I, that I think the league, the league's got to take a strong look at this because I don't like it's unprovoked, you know, and to do something like that, a deliberate act. It's the same guy that fired up, fired out on the kneel down situation. Yeah. Same guy that clubbed a, uh, a New England Patriot player. In my opinion, he ought to be suspended, and he might by the end of the day today. Another thing that we saw as well, uh, not we, Chris Law noticed this uh, in uh, the uh, Miami-Minnesota game as Asiata goes in the end zone and there's a little bit of a Donnie Brook. Uh, there's a side judge coming down, and he throws his flag. Ed Walker throws his flag, and then the, the flag somewhat goes awry, winds up in the pig pile, and... <laughs> Then he takes another. Do these refs have these officials have two flags on them each time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is not a good thing for a first year official because this video is going to be around forever. <laughs> I mean, he throws with the empty hand. You're about the quarterback. This is, empty, <laughs> this is an empty hand flag throw by a first year official, Ed Walker, out of the Pac-12, who's going to live with this forever. I saw that and started laughing hysterically, and I'm sure that uh, so they have two every member of his crew. Oh, you always have two because you can throw three. I've seen three. One for one infraction, then you pull, get the other pot, then the hat goes the next. Hat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the hat goes next. The hat. So. But he's th the first one, he threw it, and it just like and, it must have hit him. And then he and then he whiffed. Well, Look it. at it. He whiffed, whiffed again. See, he thought he had two in the front of his uh, so it it went went pockets through, but there. But I don't know how the thought he was going through Travis Kelce. Kelce. Back. Looked like I, he was going Travis Kelce motion. I, I know it's amazing. Well, he kind of lost it. Kelsey. You know, he never. That's why it would have been a, a fumble because he never had complete <laughs> control of the flag in his hand when his hand started forward. So that yes. means we should have another one of these on the set for you, just in case. Yeah, we should. Okay, I'll bring one. We're what else learned. do refs have two of? Uh oh, Mike? bean Thank bags. You. Thank God we're going to break. Hey, two. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience. <laughs> 